Sounds like to me you're biblically illiterate. Study the Bible before posting. <laughs> You've been lied to. You were told that sinner saved by grace is in the Bible, and it isn't. Now, this is a controversial subject, and how do I know? Well, when I posted a video about this on Instagram a few weeks ago, I received the following comments. Sounds like to me you're biblically illiterate. Study the Bible before posting. <laughs> You know, there were some that were a little bit meaner, but I don't want to bleep out cuss words. So <laughs> needless to say, not everyone agreed with me and that's okay. But we should always be able to evaluate what we believe, especially if we're saying it's biblical. Now, I stated and I firmly believe that the phrase sinner saved by grace is not and cannot be found in the Bible. My stance is that in Christ, we were sinners and now we are saved by his grace. And I believe they're two separate things. And today I'm going to answer the main arguments that people commented that they felt like proved me wrong that sinner saved by grace is in the Bible. So let's start with the first one. Josh said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one may boast. And then he added, stop posting. That's a little rude, I may say. And this wasn't the only comment that posted this verse. Justin posted it as well and ended it by saying, it is in the Bible, insinuating that this somehow proved me wrong. Now again, I said the phrase, sinner saved by grace isn't in the Bible. They posted this verse like it proved me wrong. So let's look at the verse. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and it is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Okay, this is a great verse. I love this verse, but do you notice anything? Did you see anywhere in this verse the words sinner saved by grace? In fact, the word sinner isn't even in this Bible verse. Here's what I see. By grace, you have been saved. Now they might say, well, it doesn't literally say it, but that's what it meant. Now we have to be careful not to put our own interpretation on the Bible. We can't just assume it meant something that it didn't say. So can I see how they might try to use this verse? Yeah, but the problem is it doesn't actually say sinner saved by grace. Therefore, it doesn't prove me wrong when I said it wasn't in the Bible. Okay, next comment. 1 John 1, 8, if we say we are without sin, then there is no truth in us. We are saved. We are sinners. Okay, back to my original argument. All I said was, sinner saved by grace wasn't in the Bible. Did 1 John 1, 8 say that? No, it doesn't. So it doesn't prove me wrong. However, I think there is some confusion in what I'm trying to say. When I say I'm not a sinner saved by grace, I'm not saying I have never sinned and never will sin again. This is not about actions. This is about my identity in Christ. I was a sinner. Yes, that's true. But then I called upon the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. I am a new creation. And if you're in Christ, so are you. And that old sinner is dead and gone. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus became sin. Why? Why? What does it say? So we could be made righteous. Is a sinner righteous? No, a sinner is unrighteous. The word righteous means right with God. Sinners are not right with God. Jesus gave us his righteousness and gave us a new nature when we received him into our life. Have I sinned? Yes. Was I a sinner? Yes. But then I called upon the name of Jesus and I became a saint. I became righteous. You see, it's an identity thing. Do I still sin? Yeah. But you might say, doesn't that make you a sinner? No, and let me tell you why. I'm a human, right? Do you agree? Even though sadly there's people out there now that are confused about this, but I'm a human. What if I get on my knees right now and I start barking like a dog? Am I a dog? I sure hope you said no. But what if I eat dog food for the next four weeks? Am I a dog? You see, I, I may act like a dog, but it doesn't change my nature. My identity is human. Before I encountered Jesus, I had a sin nature. I was a sinner. I was without hope. Even if I did righteous acts, like give to the poor, pray, help others. I couldn't make myself righteous. Well, Jesus gave me his free gift of righteousness, as it says in Romans 5, and now my new nature is righteous. So when I sin, it doesn't change my nature. I may make mistakes and bark like a dog, but it doesn't change the fact that I am now righteous and I'm right with God. Do you get what I'm saying? In Christ, our nature is righteous, like, like human. If I act like a dog or I act like a sinner, it doesn't change my nature because that was a free gift that I didn't earn. So I'm not saying we don't sin. I'm simply saying that our nature, who we are in Christ, is not sinner saved by grace. 
Our nature is, I was a sinner, but now I am saved, I am righteous. Saying I am still a sinner minimizes the power of the blood of Jesus. It says that the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice wasn't big enough to actually change my identity. I was a sinner before Jesus, and I'm still a sinner. I'm sorry, no, I'm saved. I may sin, but I'm not a sinner anymore. I am righteous, and I'm a new creation. And if you're in Christ, so are you. Now, I don't believe that we should call ourselves sinners anymore when we belong to Jesus. See, when we focus on his righteousness in us, we are magnifying how powerful his saving grace is. His grace and his blood is so powerful that it changed me. I was a sinner, but I no longer am. You were a sinner, but you no longer are. But you know, some people think we should just still be called sinners. And these last comments that I'm going to show you are going to be from people who had one other argument to try and prove me wrong. Andrew said, Paul called himself the worst of sinners. And Clint, referring to the same thing, said 1 Timothy 1.15, Paul is the chief of sinners, present tense, it's in there. We will look at the verse in a moment, but again, listen to the spirit of this. Very argumentative, no love. Listen, I'm willing to be wrong. And if I'm wrong, God, show me and help me. But they said, it is in there. What's in there? You are saying the phrase sinner saved by grace is in the Bible. So let's look at it. This is a faithful saying and trustworthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I agree that when I read this verse, I've said, Lord, help me with this. But here's the first thing I would like to point out. It does not say sinner saved by grace. So to emphatically say that I am wrong, it is in there, that's just not correct. Now I can totally appreciate that people believe it might be in there. But I've now covered the three main arguments scripturally that people use to say it is in there and none of them say it. But let's look at this verse in 1 Timothy in another translation. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Well, I'm not going to deny that it looks like Paul is still referring to himself as a sinner. The word Paul uses here for worst is the word protos. And it means first. Now, what is this verse really trying to highlight, I believe? What is the main focus? Is it focusing more on sin or is it focusing more on Christ coming to save? I believe the focus of this verse is focused on Christ's saving. So it's very possible that Paul wasn't saying, I am the chief of sinners, I am the worst sinner. He could have really been saying, Jesus came to save sinners and I am the first in line. I needed to be saved more than anyone else. This is just one way that I kind of see it. Because even Paul in verse 13 says, I was formerly a blasphemer and a violent man, referring to the past tense. He understood that this was no longer his nature. So it's possible he wasn't really referring to himself as a sinner currently. But even if people refuse to agree with me on that, then listen to me here. 2 Corinthians 13.1 says that every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses, meaning if you're going to build a theology or you're going to build a doctrine, you can't just take one verse. Even if you believe that Paul is presently calling himself a sinner in the present, I want you to find other scriptures then because you need at least one or two more to prove this as a theological stance, but you won't find them. Nowhere in the New Testament are we referred to as sinners once we are in Christ. But here's what the Bible says repeatedly. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He became sin, talking about Jesus, to make us righteous. Romans 5.17, But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. Romans 1.17, For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. And there's a lot more. So here's my encouragement. Stop calling yourself a sinner. It belittles the powerful work that Jesus did in you. Stop calling yourself a sinner saved by grace. It causes you to live small because you focus on how unworthy you are and how pathetic you are. Focus on how amazing God is and that he made you righteous. He made you right with God. He gave you his righteousness. Now, when you mess up, just confess it, but start talking about yourself as the righteousness of God in Christ. Stop talking about yourself as a sinner, as a sinner saved by grace. Knowing your identity is huge, and if you truly want to walk in your God-giving purpose, and you want to learn more about your identity in Christ, I encourage you to get this book, Hello God Says My Name Is. It will give you 31 names and identity of who God says you are. You can find a link in the description below, but click this video for more, and I'll see you in the next video.